It must be something about L.A. Sparks training camp, but it's always good for some passive-aggressive shade. Last year, it was Liz Cambage calling out the Australian Opals, saying how she felt so supported by the Sparks, which she never felt by the Opals. And this year, in a bit of a surprise, the shade has come from Neka Ogumake. Now, we're going to take a deep dive on her recent comments but to understand them, you need to review Sparks' history to truly appreciate what an S-show this organization has been over the years. And then we take a look at the bigger question, which is, have the Sparks finally figured it out and are they on the right track? Or is the Kurt Miller era just another chapter in the drama series otherwise known as the L.A. Sparks? Now, before we get started, if you like this content, I would ask you to please, please subscribe to the channel as it helps it grow. All right, let's get into this. First, the comments from NECA. This is the first time I've really experienced what I believe to be a professional organization, she said. And that leaves space for me not to have to step into a manager role, which doesn't leave me a lot of time to do the things that I really want to do, which is play basketball and hang out with my teammates. I really feel like I've relinquished a lot of that because we have some truly phenomenal people that have turned this organization into what it deserves to be. So what is NECA calling out? Well, it's not just Derek Fisher. Because essentially from winning a championship in 2016 and going to the finals in 2017, the Sparks have been a mess since that time. And well, probably even while winning those championships. You see, after losing in the playoffs in 2018, the Sparks coach, Brian Agler at the time, resigned suddenly in the offseason with no reason given. Everybody played nice in the press releases. Angler said he needed a fresh start. The Sparks probably needed one as well. However, ex-GM Penny Toller alleged in her lawsuit that the coach had an inappropriate relationship with a player from 2015 to 2018. Did that play in his leaving? We don't know. Because the lawsuit was settled, but this lawsuit did show a high level of dysfunction, to say the least, in the Sparks organization, which got much worse after Agler resigned because Toller herself hired Derek Fisher in a search of one. And after an initial good start by Fisher, the Sparks melted down in the 2019 playoffs and got booted from the playoffs by Connecticut's son, where they were being coached by Kurt Miller at the time. Hence the Kurt Miller dig at Candace Parker about how the Suns have always gone well against CP and how they've knocked her out of the playoffs a number of times. But this is where things really got crazy for the Sparks. As during this series, Fisher reportedly got irritated at Candace Parker for suggesting a counter to the Suns trapping scheme, which likely contributed to him giving her significantly limited minutes during the elimination game against the Suns and basically benching her in the fourth quarter of the series. Then after the series, it was leaked that general manager Penny Toller berated the team with racially filled epithets and she was not retained as the general manager. And of course, who did the Sparks pick to replace her? The one and only Derek Fisher as GM. I'm sure the owner Magic Johnson and team managing partner Eric Holloman decided hell He can't be any worse as GM as he is a coach. Well, they were wrong, but we will go through GM Fisher moves in a bit. As mentioned before, Toller filed a lawsuit which totally outlined the level of dysfunction in the Sparks organization, as it not only made claims of inappropriate relationships by the coach, but also by Eric Holloman, who was supposedly in a relationship with team president at the time, Christine Simmons. And because of this, supposedly in the 2019 offseason, Toller and Derek Fisher wanted to trade Candace Parker, but this was put a stop to by Simmons, who was close to Candace Parker. Toller alleges that Simmons went to Holloman and said, hey, stop this from happening. I don't want my buddy traded, which actually was 
pretty good move. I, I don't know Toller saying that she was fired inappropriately based on this trade alone. I don't see why you'd be trading CP. But anyway, this shows the level of dysfunction with the Sparks organization. Now, Simmons has moved on. Agler moved on. But Fisher remained. And oh my God, the damage of Derek Fisher and the curse that he left. It's unbelievable. The 2020 season was a write-off because of COVID. And then after the 2020 season, both Chelsea Gray went to the Aces and Candace Parker left to go to the Chicago Wings, which is likely due that they didn't want to play with Derek Fisher, which is understandable. The preseason preview for the 21 season is almost laughable as they're talking about rebuilding the culture and subtle digs, I think, at Candace Parker. And then she goes on to win the championship with Chicago, which puts more heat on Derek Fisher as they miss out on the playoffs. And is there anything better than a desperate coach GM? And then he makes two unbelievably bad moves. One, bringing in Liz Cambage. And then a second move, which is more egregious. He trades a number one pick to get Kennedy Carter How he gave up a number one pick for Kennedy Carter is unbelievable as she was in the doghouse from the previous season where she got in a fight. I think it was with Courtney Williams and then didn't even finish out the season. But hey, he said, no, take our one. I don't care. And then you had the train wreck of 2022 with Cam Beige walking out of the team, Kennedy Carter, like Fisher didn't even have to see this train wreck as he he lost his job within like the first two months. And then after that, Carter was a do not play by Fred Williams for like five to 10 games as she was in his doghouse. Now, here's the real curse of the fish. With about two months left, it was pretty obvious the Sparks season was a train wreck, but they couldn't even tank to get Aaliyah Boston. No, because they had given their draft pick away. So they try to play out the string as best they can and make the playoffs and just miss out. So no playoffs and no lottery balls. And now what they do is Magic and Holloman say, all right, we need to clean this up. And they go out and they bring in Karen Bryant to run the front office and personnel and Kurt Miller. What they're hoping for is respectability and they should get that with Kurt Miller. But unfortunately, CP's a free agent again, but I wonder if all the shade that Miller threw at her, the hometown girl, did not come back to LA. Instead, she goes to the Aces and ring chases. And what the Sparks have now is a good regular season coach, a good coach, not a great coach. You have to win a championship to be a great coach. And as CP called out, Kurt Miller's never won a championship. And that's the hole in his resume. And this team is looking like they are set up to be team average. Miller's already making noise that we're going to play big and grind it out and everything. The type of basketball that everybody hates. I have no doubt they'll make the playoffs. Probably number eight or number six seed or whatever. But this team can't win a championship. And instead of tanking last year and using the draft pick to get like a franchise building player like Boston, now they are on the track to get long-term mediocrity. Who would you rather be, an Indiana fan or an LA fan? I know I would take Indiana. I think they're going to tank again and try to see if they can get Caitlin Clark or somebody like that again in the draft and build young versus the Sparks that are going sort of the wings sort of theory. Hey, we'll be average, and then hopefully, of hopes, we'll find that magic free agent that happens to become free, and we're good enough, and they want to come to us. I would much rather go down the Indiana fever-type road versus what the Sparks are doing. Now, I've lived that team average life with the Houston Astros with Biggio and Bagwell. The best thing that ever happened was when Drayton sold the team to Crane and he just ripped it down to the studs that team and rebuilt through the draft. And that's when it comes back to ownership, which leads me back to Gumake and her comments. It's great that she believes in the organization. I'd expect nothing less because she's a great team player and wants to believe the best. And she actually took a lower salary to stay with the Sparks. So wishing that she goes well, but if you're looking at this and she says the organization has been poorly run over her entire career, what has been the constant during that time? Yes, I know D. Fish was bad, 
but it's really the constant's been Magic Johnson and managing partner Eric Holloman. And well, you got to cut off the head of the snake if you want to kill the snake. So I say all the mismanagement basically comes from the head of the snake, which is those two guys. Because essentially, the coaches and the GMs, they're all middle management. I mean, everybody that's had a job knows this. The middle manager, your supervisor, they don't make the calls. It's ultimately the owner of the company that's making the calls. So I am not as optimistic about the Sparks turning over a new leaf. They are doomed to repeat the same mistakes that they've done before. But now, instead of being god-awful and rebuilding through the draft, they're going to be team average and stuck in that purgatory of first or second round exit. If you made it this far, then please give my video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you hated it, give me your poison below. Thanks a lot for watching. Good night.